Hi, today I'm reviewing the Then I Met You Essence Light Sunscreen SPF 50. And really quick, I just want to say, purchase these products with my own money. I'll never waste your time with sponsor ads or videos. So if that's something you like, subscribe, share, uh, check out the links, or check out my Patreon community. So, uh, Then I Met You is a newer brand, K Beauty brand, and they're sold at Soko Glam. I will link to them below. And they have a small routine of products, and I really am enjoying most of their stuff. So when this came out, I checked out the ingredient list, and when I noticed uh, it was fragrance-free, I picked it up and uh, pretty impressed with it, but I have a few caveats with that. So, okay. So first off, so, so like I say, this is a must-have year-round effortless essential Essential sunscreen that features fermented sake extract to moisturize and help protect your skin from environmental stressors. And a blend of ceramides, hyaluronic acid, and provitamin B5 to leave skin with a dewy, radiant finish. The skin nourishing formula allows this barely there chemical sunscreen to be worn alone or as a base for makeup application without pilling or cakiness. And I tend to agree with most of that. So, with a few caveats, and I'll talk about them. Okay, so my first criteria is packaging. No issues with the packaging. It's really cute packaging, which I guess for the price, it should be cute, right? So it's easy to find. In terms of denatured drying types of alcohol, it does not contain any of those. And um, <clears throat> although there are some people that prefer that in their sunscreens. Um, in terms of fragrance, it doesn't have any fragrance ingredients. It does have that light sunscreeny smell to it, which isn't very strong or noticeable and it dissipates. But it is there uh, right when you apply it. The manufacturing location for this is Korea, which in my opinion at this point is still kind of a liability to be manufacturing there. The interesting thing is this is made in Korea, but they used U.S.-based filters when they could have kind of maybe included some of the newer state-of-the-art filters that's allowed to be used there. But they manufactured in Korea and then used uh, U.S.-based filters. They want to sell in the U.S. market, obviously. So um, anyway, so... It's a little bit of a bummer on both sides there. In terms of the SPF, this is 50, uh, which is great. You want to use 30 or above on a daily basis in the summer, especially when it's very sunny. Uh, 50 is where you want to be. In terms of the UVA protection factor for this one, so this is broad spectrum, which is the U.S.-based term, uh, but they also included the PAs with three pluses after it. Four is the most pluses you can have. So the fact that this has three pluses, it's not quite super high in terms of UVA protection. UVA protection is what ages us and causes wrinkles. UVB are what instantly burns us. But UVA rays accumulate and uh, you don't notice it's happening, but it's aging you. So those are really, and it's really new information in terms of history and things like that. So um, anyway, so it, this indicates average UVA protection. If you are into anti-aging and things like that, you really want to focus on the UVA protection factor because that's going to stop you or slow you from aging. So um, I'm not super impressed with that. Uh, the UVA filter they use in here is avobenzone at 3%, so it's not super exciting, but uh, anyway. Okay, then in terms of the filters used, so I mentioned that 3% avobenzone, UVA reabsorber, um, the only one really, the only UVA filter, chemical filter allowed to be used in the U.S. And avobenzone loses 30% of its UV absorption capacity after one hour of exposure to sunlight, which makes it not super exciting. However, when you use other filters with it, it helps stabilize it more. So then after that, they use 9% homosalate, which is a chemical sunscreen agent that protects the skin from UVB rays. It's not a super strong filter, but uh, it's combined with other sunscreens, which help it work better. Um, and then we've got 4.5% octosylate, which is another UVB ray absorber, uh, yellowish oily liquid, uh, peak absorbance at 306 nanometers, not super strong, but enhances other filters, such as uh, the other chemical filters in here to work better. And then last but not least, we've got 5% octocrylone, another oil-soluble chemical sunscreen that protects in the UVB and just a little bit in the UVA2 range. Um, and it also helps avobenzone be a little bit more stable. Uh, the interesting thing with octocrylene is there's uh, more people can be allergic to it than I ever realized. So there can be some people are very sensitive to that. So keep that in mind. Okay. 
So, I mean, yeah. Just US-based sunscreen. Okay, so... Uh, in terms of the texture of this one, so um, in terms of white cast, initially it looks like you're going to get a real noticeable white cast, right? Uh, but once you smooth it into skin, it pretty much ends up being pretty transparent. And uh, anyway, so there's really no white cast on this once it smooths into skin. It actually has a really nice uh, lotion texture and it feels really nice on skin. In my opinion, it's easy with this one to apply a liberal amount of the filter or of the sunscreen. You want to apply it liberally because <clears throat> these are uh, based on, the SPF 50 is based on you applying a certain amount per centimeter of your face. So this one it makes it pretty easy. The texture of it makes it very easy to apply a liberal amount of it, which is nice. Because there are some that it's very hard to apply it liberally because of how thick it is or sometimes how thin it is. So this one, no issues with that. Really wonderful texture, very easy to use. It feels really nice on skin. Um, it has a slight dewy finish uh, that is non-sticky. It works great under foundation, which is nice. Um, smooths over skin really easily, sets to a slightly radiant finish that's non-greasy but very hydrating feeling, and it really works well under foundation. If you're not gonna use this under foundation, you probably will wanna set it with a little bit of powder because it can uh, look a little bit radiant, but otherwise it's a pleasure to use. It's really nice, it feels nice, and it doesn't end up feeling greasy or feeling drying either, so it's very, very enjoyable to use. Okay, in terms of the beneficial ingredients in here, I'm just gonna highlight the main ones. We've got Patera, which is yeast-derived ingredient that's anti-aging and nourishing. It's claimed to be loaded with vitamins, amino acids, minerals, and organic acids. It's the ingredient made famous by SK2. Then we've got Saccharomyces Ferment Filtrate, soothing ingredient, rich in essential minerals, amino acids, beta-glucan and vitamins, great moisturizing and soothing, and may also have some brightening and wrinkle repair activity as well. We've got Ceramide NP, skin identical ingredient. Then we've got all these versions of hyaluronic acid. We've got hydrolyzed hyaluronic acid, sodium acetylated hyaluronic, hyaluronic acid, hydrolyzed sodium hyaluronic, Sodium hyaluronic cross polymer, then just regular sodium hyaluronic, and then potassium hyaluronic, which are all seven different humectants, which are uh, can be hydrating for your skin. So seven different versions of them. And the interesting thing is I don't have notice this one pills. When I notice hyaluronic acid is in a sunscreen, a lot of times I'll notice pilling and things. I didn't have that at all with this one. So go figure. Uh, ginseng root extract, an antioxidant, panthenol, provitamin B5, which is skin soothing and wound healing. In terms of acneogenic ingredients for this one, we only have two. Uh, we've got Cetera 20 and Sorbet and Olate, so nothing terrible, um, terribly alarming for acne prone skin. In terms of animal testing, this is cruelty free, so that's awesome. Uh, then in terms of the performance, uh, the one thing I do want to mention, it's not water resistant. So this is a great day-to-day -day sunscreen. I'm out running errands. I'll be out maybe a couple hours total. I'm not going to be sweating a lot. Not going to be swimming. Uh, you know, it's just a nice one that works nicely under makeup and foundation. So for a day you're swimming, sweating a lot, very humid. Uh, I'm going to pick something else. I'm probably going to pick Anessa or I'm going to pick something from um, Ali Kenbo or something else. Probably not this one, but this one I think during the winter will be a good one for me just because of how elegant it feels. I mean, it really feels nice on skin. At the end of the day, skin still looks great. It doesn't accentuate dry spots or dry patches, and it doesn't end up looking too greasy or feeling heavy. It just, skin feels nice at the end of the day after wearing this one, but for the super sunniest days, I'm gonna be out the most. I'm just not picking this one because, mainly, because it's not sweat resistant, and then mainly because of the UVA filters. If it's super hot, super sunny, I'm out a lot, going with something with the strongest UVA protection I can get. I'm going with La Roche-Posay, Bioderma, Nessa Alley, things like that. But this one is a great one. I'll certainly finish this. I'll use it up. Uh, it's great. Like today, I'll probably be out maybe an hour most. I'm wearing this under my foundation. It feels nice and light. And a lot of chemical US-based filters and can and tend to irritate my eyes and things. I didn't have that at all with this one. So that's nice. Okay, then in terms of the price, last but not least to mention, uh, this is the full size, 1.7 ounces, 50 milliliters. It retails for 36 bucks, so it is, it's expensive. And especially when sunscreen is something you need to apply liberally, 
it gets to be expensive fast. I mean, if you're applying this liberally, the amount you need to, probably a bottle like this might last you a couple weeks. So it ends up how much you need to spend or how much you want to spend. But if you're just using it during the winter and not on days when you need to reapply it because you're not out that much, then that's a different thing. So, uh, okay. So anyway, with the perfect score being a 15, I gave this an 11, but that doesn't demonstrate how much I really do enjoy this sunscreen. Uh, it's probably one of my favorite sunscreens using U.S.-based chemical filters that are out there. So that says a lot. Um, anyway, so I kind of wish they would have used K-Beauty filters, but then they're then it's hard to sell in the U.S. Then you have to go the Yes Dye route or you can't do certain things. So I get it. It sucks that the U.S. has not approved any filters in like a hundred and gazillion years, but I don't think anything's going to change. In fact... I don't feel like they want to eliminate certain filters that are already out there. So I don't know. I guess we should just be happy with what we got. Maybe. I don't know. Even an act of Congress can't make them allow new filters. So anyway, there we go. I think there will be a time in the near future where the U.S. only allows mineral filters. I see it coming, uh, which is kind of terrifying because mineral filters just um, a lot of people don't like to use them because they're thick, uh, because they they feel greasy. Some of them feel drying. Uh, they're not as aesthetically pleased. I mean, they don't have an invisible finish a lot of the time, but I see the U.S. going in a direction where we might end up in a couple years with only titanium dioxide and zinc oxide allowed. I mean, anyway, I see it coming. I hope I'm wrong. So anyway, and totally off topic. So interesting hearing from you guys if you had a chance to check this out yet. And if you have what your thoughts are, I uh, love hearing from you guys and stay tuned for more tomorrow. Thanks so much. Bye, guys.